Following the attack on Pearl Harbor, December 7, 1941, the International Harvester Company formed a battalion, and in May, the next year, Dad was commissioned as a first lieutenant assigned to the 12th Armored Division. He received training at Camp Campbell in Kentucky. Dad and Mom's relationship became more serious, and they married in June 1943, beginning their life together joyously during this time of great uncertainty. At Camp Barkley, Texas, additional training seemed easier for Dad with Mom at his side. Dad's duties included the loading and supplying of ammunitions. In September 1944, as a captain, Dad left for England and the European Front. Mom, pregnant with Madeline, whose birth announcement would reach him later in Normandy. Archival film from the Harvester Battalion chronicles the movement of Dad's division during the war. The division crossed the English Channel by ship to the mouth of the Seine River in France, to the region of La Harve, trying to avoid the many mines in the river. The port was so heavily damaged, the vessels had to unload through the front end directly onto the riverbanks. After unloading the landing ship transports, LSTs, of vehicles, tanks, ammunition, and other supplies, the division prepared for its advance across France. Once ashore, they were greeted warmly by the war-weary French. Dad's division first assembled near Luneville prior to going into combat. Here you see one of Dad's good friends, Harry Malcolm. Eventually, the division advanced towards Colmar, where they crushed the last German stronghold in France. Parades and joyous celebrations followed the liberation of Colmar. In the months to follow, the 12th Armored Division of about 14,000 men would earn recognition in many ways. The convoy pushed forward, subject to enemy strafing and sniping attacks. As General Patton's Mystery Division, it slashed from Trier, France, across southern Germany and into Austria capturing thousands of Germans en route. Dad continued to monitor inventories and distribution of ammunition supplies. During the advance, maintenance of equipment, trucks, and tanks proved critical on a daily basis. For Dad and many of his Midwestern comrades, it would be the first time they had ever seen mountains. The months passed, the seasons changed. There were times when trucks that normally would have transported tanks became available for moving ammunition to the front lines. Dad's aggressive management prevented shortage of ammunition to combat elements. As the division progressed, signs along the road warned of landmines. In town after town, village after village, crumbled buildings and debris revealed the terrible destruction and the devastation of war. The division averaged 20 to 25 miles a day in its swift forward movement. Dad, Captain McMenamin, solved problems involving long hauls of ammunition, shortage of personnel, and rapidly changing ammunition needs. And these efforts earned him a bronze star for meritorious service. All the while, Despite the war, local townspeople bravely attempted to go through the routines of daily living, even the children. The convoy continued to push forward and finally reached the Danube. There, the division seized the first bridge across the river, allowing it to advance into Austria. At Landsberg, one of the most heartbreaking aspects of the war involved liberating five satellite concentration camps of Dachau. Dad sometimes recalls the liberation of the camps and admits that the haunting images are forever imprinted in his memory. Reminiscing about the war, Dad often recalls the beauty of the countryside and its sharp contrast to the ugliness of war and the evils spawned by hatred. In May 1945, Germany surrendered and the war ended. 
troops enjoyed some celebrations, eagerly awaiting their return to the United States. In this last frame, Dad, soon to become a major, walks toward the camera shortly before coming home. He was reunited with Mom for Christmas and was able to hold Madeline, now 15 months old, for the first time.